Here we go again. You bet you. Yes, here we go again. It's Alan Young, very deep in trouble. And as usual, we got to dig him out. Listen to that young man who tries to be helpful and always needs help himself, Alan Young. No, David, I've, I've got to work in my sign shop tonight, and I have no time for parties. Come on, Mr. Young. Me and the rest of the kids are going to play pin the tail on the donkey. No, David. Ah, oh, come on. It won't hurt you much. Oh. <laughs> well, folks, that gives you a slight idea of what goes on at tonight's show, which you'll hear in just a moment. is out having fun, all except our friend Alan. You see, Alan is now in business for himself. He's opened his own little sign painting shop, and he has no time for the festivities. Right now, he's over at his girl Betty's house waiting to tell her that he's too busy to take her to the masquerade dance tonight. David, I wish your sister Betty to hurry downstairs. There's something very important I have to tell her. Gee, Mr. Young, she's dressing for that masquerade. Mm-hmm. You ought to see what she's going to wear. It's a real official, genuine sailor suit. She's going to wear an official tailor suit? Well, that's against the law. So the Navy's liable to pick her up. It won't be the first time. Oh, be the first. <laughs> now, wait a sec, kid. Let's get this straight. Your sister Betty does not allow anybody to pick her up. But if she knows any sailors, I'm sure they were formally introduced <coughs> over a dropped handkerchief. Besides, <laughs> I was in the Navy myself, and I happen to know that sailors are not interested in girls. <laughs> They, they don't give a darn about girls. This statement is not endorsed by the United States Navy. All right. <laughs> I, I took Betty down to see one of the aircraft carriers, and there were 2,000 sailors on board who hadn't seen a girl in three years. And not one of them whistled at Betty. Well, how could they with their tongue hanging out? <laughs> I still don't think Betty ought to wear a real sailor's uniform. There's liable to be some trouble. Ah, uh, nobody will know the difference. Mm. She's going to wear regular sailor clothes. Shoes, hat, and tie. How can they tell the difference between her and a real sailor? <laughs> Sit down, kid. <laughs> the, the whole discussion about costumes is purely academic. The reason I'm here now is to tell Betty I'm too busy to take her to the masquerade tonight. And since I'm unable to take her, I'm sure she wouldn't think of going with anybody else, would she? Uh, <laughs> Sit down, kid. <laughs> you seem to forget your rival, that rich Schubert Updike. Oh, hello, Alan. Oh, hello, Betty. I just finished tying on my sailor costume for tonight. Oh, we'll have such fun at the masquerade. Mm. Alan, what are you going to wear? Nothing. You're free. Yeah. No, no, I mean, no. Betty, look, I'll be very diplomatic with you. Guess who's not taking you to the dance tonight? Oh, Alan, not that. 
I've been planning on this dance for a long time. It's the biggest event of the season. I told everybody we'd be there. Oh, this is awful. Oh, Betty, you're crying. There's a tear on your right eyelash. There's one on the other eyelash, too. Oh, yeah, that's all right. I'll, I'll wipe them off. There. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, here's your eyelashes back. <laughs> Betty, you, you have to understand, I have work to do tonight. I have to paint a special sign. Well, if one loved one enough, one wouldn't let one's business interfere with one's love for one. But one does love one. It's just that one must think of one's future so that one may marry one, so later on, one and one may have another one. <laughs> but suppose one decides not to marry one so that later on there won't be another one. At the end of the first inning, the score is one to one. <laughs> David, leave this room. Okay, I'm going. One was beginning to get a pain in one's neck anyway. <laughs> Alan, I'm so disappointed. And look at that great big pumpkin head in the doorway. Alan, that's father. That's a... <laughs> Talking about you. That's right, Pumpkin, uh, Mr. Dittenfeffer. <laughs> Is that jerk still hanging around here? I thought you were going to get rid of him. But, Daddy. Never I... mind, I'm hungry. What's for dinner? How about some cold lamb stew? Ah. Corned beef hash? Ah. Sounds to me like you ought to throw him a fish. <laughs> you know? What's that? Hmm. I mean, fish is good for you. It has lots of advantages. Vitamins and minerals. Oh, all sorts of advantages. You want me to eat a fish so I can choke on a bone? Oh, no, I wasn't thinking of that advantage. I mean, that... <laughs> Betty, why don't you give Alan up and marry <coughs> Hubert Updike? Why, he's nothing but... Say, wait a second, Betty. Your eyes are red. You've been crying. Alan Young tried to get fresh with you, didn't he? I'll kill him, I tell you. I'll kill him. Oh, no. Oh, Daddy, Alan's never tried to put a finger on me. Oh, so he thinks he's too good for you, does he? <laughs> I'll kill him, I tell you, I'll kill him. Now, just a second, Mr. Dittenfever. Why are you going to kill me? Because I just don't like your face. Oh. Well, as long as you have a good reason. <laughs> now, Betty, why have you been crying? Well, Alan had promised to take me to the masquerade, but now he can't. He has to paint a sign instead. Oh, don't worry, my child. That rich and eligible Hubert Updike will soon be over here. He and I were planning to spend the evening together, and now you can join us. <laughs> <laughs> Hubert Updike, spending an evening, though. Well... <laughs> Look, what's, what's he got that a rich uncle couldn't leave me? Oh, Betty, I'm here, I'm here. Come drink from my lips. <laughs> ah, Hubert, my little mustering out pay. <laughs> I see you brought the sandwiches for our own little party. Yes, Papa. I thought sandwich would be nice, so I stopped in and got some at the corner delicatessen. <laughs> corner delicatessen. <laughs> what kind of sandwiches did you get? The swash toss? <laughs> Alan Young, you're mocking me. You're just jealous because I'm so superior to you. Ah, uh, you're not so superior. I come from a family of sailors. My uncle has never been out of the Naval Reserve. So what? I come from a family of sailors, too. My uncle has never been out of Calvert Reserve. <laughs> Hubert, don't waste your time arguing with that, that sign painter. He's nothing but an idiot. Yes, he's a complete moron. He's nothing but a jerk. He's just a silly fool. Alan, are you going to stand there and listen to all that? Yeah, I can hear pretty good from here. <laughs> Come on, Hubert, I've had enough of this. Let's go inside and chat a while. Have you read any good certified checks lately? <laughs> oh, yes, Papa. I must tell you about the chart. <laughs> well, Betty, I, I have to be running back to my shop. I've got an important sign to paint for the city. Alan, since you can't take me to the dance, may I come down to your paint shop and watch you work? 
Maybe I can help. Oh, Betty, what could you possibly do? This, this is a man's work, lifting brushes and getting my hands smeared with wet paint. Well, when you get tired painting, I could sit on your lap and you could run your poor, tired fingers through my hair. Oh, it's not necessary. I have a towel. <laughs> be lonesome here all alone. All right, Betty. You, you can come with me if you want to, but I want you to remember one thing, Betty. That place is strictly for business. I don't want you hanging around and, and loving and hugging and, and kissing me. All right, Alan. I promise not to kiss you. Wait a second, Betty. Don't you think I'm being a little silly? <laughs> come on, Betty. <laughs> While Alan takes Betty to his side shop, let's listen to the four chicks and chucks sing Chickory Chick. Once there lived a chicken who would say chick, 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 all day. Soon that chick got sick and tired of just chick, chick. So one morning he started to say, chickory, chick, chala, chala. Same old words all day. Just like the chicken who found something new to sing. Open up your mouth and start to say, Oh, chicory chick, chala chala, chickala roll me in a banana cabalica wallaca. Can't you see that chicory chick is me? a nice party we're having. Oh, yes, Papa. Here, have another drink. Oh, no, no, no. I've had two already, and my head is already spinning. Oh, come on. Have another one. Milk never hurt anybody. <laughs> you know, Hubert, I'd feel much better if I knew Betty was also having a good time. But her evening was ruined by that credge, Alan Young. I'd sure like to get even with that credge. You know, Papa... <laughs> We could play almost any kind of trick on him. That's a good idea, Hubert. Now, what kind of a prank should we play on him? Well, I have my car outside. Suppose you tie him up and I drive over him. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to hurt the boy. I just want to scare him out of about ten years of his life. I'll call him up at his sign shop and invite him over. Meanwhile, Hubert, you get a couple of white sheets and a bear trap. We'll scare the life out of him. Ooh, the devil is in us tonight. <laughs> now, what is his phone number? Oh, yes. Main 4 three, six. Alan, if you're too busy painting that sign, I'll answer the phone. Never mind, Betty. I have it here. Hello. The Alan Young sign shoppy. Hello, Alan, my boy. This is Papa Dittenpepper. I wonder if you'd come over to my house tonight and have a drink with me. I'm so anxious to see you again, my boy. Betty, your father's gone out of his mind. <laughs> Mr. Dittenpepper, I, I think there's a mistake. This is Alan Young. Credge Young. Credge, jerk, spell backwards? <laughs> oh, no. You're one of the finest boys I know. <laughs> I want you to come over... Hubert and I have a few surprises for you. 
<laughs> That's nice of you, but I have to finish painting a sign, then I gotta deliver it. Well, drop over on your way. The surprises will only take a few minutes. I have the bandages, Betty. The bandages? I mean sandwiches. <laughs> Pepper, I'll, I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> Betty, I guess your father's beginning to realize that I'm making a success out of myself. Oh, yes, you're wonderful, Alan. Oh, oh. People used to call you an imbecile and a dope, but now you're a successful businessman and it hasn't changed you a bit. <laughs> Betty, those were beautiful words, but you put them together so badly. Alan, if you hurry up and finish that time, do you think we'll still be able to make the dance tonight? Well, I'm afraid not, Betty. Why don't you go to the dance yourself? Your father and Hubert want me to go over to their house. I suppose they're planning some sort of a stag party. Stag party? Alan, what's a stag party? Uh, stag party. <laughs> it's a party where a lot of men sit around smoking, and then the lights go out, and the spotlight shines down, and... Then a stag walks in. <laughs> well, it seems to me that if you have time to go to a stag party, you have time to take me to the dance. But Betty, I'm just stopping in to see your father for a minute. I have my work to do. Better finish this lettering here this time. H-O-U. Alan, uh, why won't you come with me? Mm. There's a harvest moon shining in through the window. And it's very romantic. Yeah. U S Betty, please, you're breathing down my neck. <laughs> U S Betty, you got your arms around my waist. Am I spoiling your sign, Alan? Oh, I think you're affecting my spelling. <laughs> Just look how I spell house. H O W U S W O P E. Never be practical. Forget that sign for a minute. It's such a glorious night. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it do something to you? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, don't you know what to do in a case like this? After all, you were in the Navy. Didn't you learn anything there? Sure. <laughs> Get me a mop and I'll show you. <laughs> Business, you know. <laughs> uh, hello, Alan Young, sign shoppy. Uh, this is the mayor calling. Uh, the mayor? Yes, you better get out there and put up that sign. Yeah, I, I, I just finished it, sir. I'll deliver it in a few minutes. Yeah. Oh, shall I send the bill to you? Yes. Yes, send it to the right honorable mayor, John F. Cooper, care of the progressive, clean government, honest and upright square deal party. Uh, the bill is $2.50. Well, uh, pat it a little. I've got to make a living, too. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> With the mayor himself. This sign has got to be put up tonight. I also promised to stop in and see your father. He's got some nice surprises for me. Well, you can go and have your fun. I'll go to the dance alone. It won't be long, Betty. I can leave the sign on this porch while I'm visiting with him. See you later, Betty. <laughs> How are we going to tear down a house if we don't know which house to tear down? Ah, tear down, tear down. Always destruction. The mayor says to look for a house on this street with a sign on it. Then destruction. All the time destruction. I don't see no signs nowhere. Uh, you don't see no signs. Louie, you just used a double negative. <laughs> Two years out of Princeton and I'm a bum again. <laughs> hey, look. Here comes a character down the street carrying this sign. Hey, yeah. Now he's walking up to the Ditton Pfeffer porch. Hey, I guess that's the house, Joe. Ah, uh, Ditton Pfeffer, Schmidt and Pfeffer. Why uh, the people build them, then we come along. Destruction. Always destruction. Yeah. Hey, gee, Ditton Pfeffer only built that house before the war, and it cost them 15,000 bucks. And now we gotta go tear it down. Yeah, that's reconversion for you. <laughs> well, Louie, let's get down to the corner and get a beer before we tackle this joint. This looks like it's going to be a tough one. Destruction. Always destruction. Gee, Mr. Ditton Pepper has all the lights out in the porch. Spooky. Especially with those two fellas in that truck 
following me. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of, just... <laughs> well, better leave this house condemned sign on the porch here. No use taking it inside. Knock on the door. <laughs> See, the door open by itself. I'll just feel my way around. What's that I got hold of? It's a human hand. It's all cold and clammy. What is... Oh, it's mine. <laughs> what was it doing there, anyway? Ghosts. Maybe I better put on the light. No. No, I won't. If they want me, let them grope around for me. Now, there's, there's, there's no use being afraid, Alan. Just no use being afraid. You bet you. There's just no such thing as ghosts. What are the words that song? Oh, gee, look at those two white figures coming out of the darkness. They're coming right at me. No. No! I am a ghost. I am a ghost, too. <laughs> Aren't I, Papa? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. I recognize that voice. You're not a ghost. Oh, but I am. I am. I am. <laughs> You're Hubert Updike. And that fat ghost with you is Mr. Dittenfeffer. <laughs> Oh, Hubert, I guess the game is up. Ah, uh, you two didn't fool me for one minute. I wasn't the least bit scared. Then why didn't you say something? With a mouthful of fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> you were pretty scared, weren't you, eh, Alan? Oh, I knew about it all the time. I was just going along with a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might as well have some light in here. Uh, oh. Yes, there's a lamp on that table, Alan. Uh... Just reach your hand out and you'll find it. Why, of course. <laughs> Would you mind taking this bear trap off my wrist? Oh, I haven't laughed so much in years. No hard feelings, Alan, huh? No? <laughs> uh, hey, did you... Do you hear something? Yeah, it sounds like they're tearing down something. Uh, <laughs> Probably that old house down the street. The mayor had it condemned. No, I, I, pay, I painted the sign for it, you know. As soon as it dries, I'm going to put it up. You know, sounds carry very well in this night air. You'd almost think they were tearing down this house. <laughs> yes, you would. <laughs> yes, you would. Wait a minute. That house condemned sign. I left it right out on the... Mr. Dittenfeffer, the sign, I left it out... Let's not worry about signs. I'm with the party. Uh, why don't you go into the kitchen and take a sandwich? Yeah, but... Oh, well, all right. Mr. D Mr. Dittenfeffer, I think there's something you ought to know about your kitchen. Why, what's wrong with my kitchen? It's going down the street in a truck. <laughs> in a truck? Oh, heaven... Heavens to gimbals. Look in that room, Papa. What's going on in there? Well, I've heard of sunken living rooms, but this one has completely disappeared. <laughs> now, look, Hubert. I'll just open the door and look for myself. Oh, no. No! Oh, no! Stop. I was trying to tell you. I left the house condemned sign on your front porch and they tore your house down. <laughs> you, Ellen Young, I'm going to kill you once and for all. Put your neck in my hands. <laughs> look, Mr. Dittenfeffer, it isn't my fault. I wanted to work tonight, but you made me come over here. You wanted to play tricks on me. Well, I... 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 You would have died. The... <laughs> Do you hear? I'll kill you. Oh, Mother, I've been ambushed. 
Papa. No, Mr. Dutch and Papa. No, no. <laughs> Yes, Betty's father will be interested in a new sign when he gets back, and I have just the thing for sale. Desirable seven-room pile of bricks. Again next Tuesday at the same time for the four chicks and Chuck, Jim Backus, Jean Gillespie, Dickie Monahan, Peter Van Steeden, and his orchestra, and our star, that young man who is young today and young forever, Alan Young. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.